Schrodinger's equation and the finite element method. Engineering meets quantum physics. What happens when engineering is applied to the physical theories that describe our world at an atomic level? This production will attempt to answer that question in brief and display some of the most recent developments in this field. Electrons are the main subatomic particles that are responsible for the behavior of our world around us. It is electrons that are involved in the bonding of molecules and compounds, electrons that determine how a material reacts to light, heat, and mechanical stress, and free electrons and metals that allow us to harness what we call electricity. Thus, to predict anything about a material from the atomic level, a concept very appealing to scientists, you must know something about the way that electrons are distributed around that material's atomic nuclei. In other words, you must determine the electronic structure of that material. For years, quantum theory, an experimentally verified theory describing the electronic structure of atoms, has existed. This theory was advanced by Schrodinger's famous wave equation in 1926 and Dirac's work thereafter. Despite how accurate and well established it is today, Quantum theory is still extremely difficult to apply quantitatively to the real world. The fact is that the equations behind it become far too complicated to solve directly when considering more than extremely simple cases. Therefore, in order to apply quantum theory, efficient methods to approximate the actual solutions of these equations must be employed. To date, there have been many methods devised to perform electronic structure calculations, that is, to approximate the electronic structure of atoms, molecules, and atomic clusters. One of the most popular electronic structure theories used to do this is the density functional theory proposed by Cohn and Shem in 1965. With density functional theory, one computes single electron wave functions in order to determine the electron density and, by extension, the ground state of an atomic system. This is usually done numerically by approximating the wave functions with a linear combination of some basis functions. The most popular type of these basis functions are known as plane waves. Since plane waves are inherently periodic in nature, these basis sets restrict calculations only to periodic systems. Furthermore, they cannot handle all electron calculations, large system sizes, or non-uniform spatial resolution. Another way to define a basis is with Gaussian orbitals, which are essentially three-dimensional exponential functions. This type of basis set can handle only non-periodic systems and becomes very expensive when the system size grows. This is where real space methods like the finite element method come into the picture. The finite element method, or FEM for short, is a well-established numerical method that has been used in traditional engineering fields since the 1950s. With FEM, the domain of a problem, which is usually governed by differential equations too complex to solve directly, is broken up into a mesh of finite elements. Each of these elements are then used to define polynomial basis functions, which are assembled piecewise into a whole. In this manner, approximate solutions to phenomena such as heat flow, electromagnetic fields, and mechanical stress in a material can be computed. Although the finite element method is commonly applied to problems such as these, by no means is it limited to them. Though FEM has been studied and used for so long in engineering, it is relatively unexplored in electronic structure calculations. A novel approach to such calculations involves using the well-established finite element method to determine electronic wave functions and electron density of a quantum system. This allows one to generate a polynomial basis for the calculation, instead of a plane wave basis or Gaussian orbital basis as mentioned earlier. This approach has the potential to allow for electronic structure calculations on much larger atomic systems than ever before. 
The power of the finite element method lies in the fact that it can handle unstructured coarse graining of elements, which means making some elements larger than others. This allows for adaptive resolution, locally refined regions in the areas of a problem that matter, and coarser regions elsewhere. One can also use higher order polynomial functions as approximations for elements in an FEM mesh. By doing this, the total number of elements needed for a problem can be reduced, saving computing time. In addition, the finite element method also scales extremely well in parallel computing environments. All of these features make FEM competitive with other basis sets in doing electronic structure calculations. The finite element method is a tried and true engineering practice that can be successfully applied to the physics of a material on the atomic scale. This technique is very promising and may one day lead to electronic structure calculations on multi-million atom systems. The ability to perform such calculations will allow for the study of materials like never before and just might lead to some of the next major developments in the science and technology of mankind.